My name is Chris Campbell. I'm a practicing CPA and I work with small businesses and individuals to help them pay the least amount of taxes possible while keeping them out of jail. So what I wanted to talk about today was residency uh, requirements. So I had a phone call with a prospective client. They lived in a major city. However, they were looking to make a change in the residency status to avoid the local taxes. So they had told me that they were going to simply rent their car in a non-taxable state. And I'll say the state, it was South Dakota. When they mentioned that and get an idea of their lifestyle and where they live, I said, did you plan on actually moving out there? And it didn't sound like there was any plans on actually doing that. It was more of an impression that they could uh, simply just register a vehicle in this particular state and then they would become a residence for tax purposes. So that kind of brought me to just explaining and I figured I'd share with you some of the things that you would need to do to determine residency. And I had explained that it's a bit more to it than just simply um, registering a car. For those that might not be familiar with some cities, if you're a resident of that city, not only do you pay taxes to that state, but you also pay taxes to that city. New York is one. There are tactics and things that you can do if you are deemed a resident outside of these particular cities, you avoid that additional tax. So in this instance, the particular taxpayer was looking to avoid the city tax by registering a car in a different state. So what I wanted to walk through uh, was the steps and the things that you would need to do to actually claim uh, residency, at least for tax purposes, um, you know, in, in a particular area. And this is something that I've walked through with a number of clients where it's tax advantageous to be residents of no tax state, such as South Dakota in this instance, such as Texas, Florida, New Hampshire, Nevada. So these are places where you, when you hear a lot of people looking to move to, that's part of the reason why they move to because the states don't tax income. They make up for it in other ways with sales tax and things of that nature. But they don't have income tax. It's quite uh, advantageous to live in these states. And when you look to relocate to some of these tax-friendly places, uh, sometimes the places that they're leaving may look at it as cruelty. Or in instances where you claim residency uh, in one place, but you still spend a lot of time in the other. We'll use New York City as an example where people may have a home in New York City, but they may have homes elsewhere. So then the question is, uh, what is their tax residency. So I remember some years ago, um, the baseball player Derek Jeter got caught up in a tax case where he claimed he was a resident of Florida. But as you know, he played for the New York Yankees. So I would imagine he had uh, a residence uh, in the five boroughs because he played baseball at the five boroughs. So when he claimed that he was a uh, Florida resident, and avoided paying New York City taxes. New York City and New York State had something to say about it. And I don't remember the outcome of the case, but nonetheless, there was an investigation, there was an audit. Again, I don't remember what happened, but his residency was challenged. With that said, when your residency were to get challenged, here are the things that you need to account for um, to have a legit claim on a tax residency. The first thing is you actually need to have a place an actual residence. You don't actually have to buy a residence, but you can rent a residence, but you need to have some sort of residence there. Um, you know, go, get you, go buy a place, go get yourself a lease, make sure it's in your name, don't put it under a company name, make sure it's you, you're able to say that you live there. Uh, that's one. Two, your bills. Where do all your bills go? Do your bills still go to New York City? Do your bills go to the place that you're trying to claim? All of your bills. Does that indicate that's where your main residence is? Make sure your bills go to this new tax residence. So that's another. Another is, I mentioned this, registering your vehicle. Make sure your vehicles are registered in that state. Um, another is uh, voting registration. Where are you registered to vote? If you want to claim this tax-free state, Make sure you're registered to vote there, because that is something that they will look at. Um, bank accounts. Where are your bank accounts located? Are your bank accounts located in this state that you're looking to claim? Make sure you go and register your accounts. Close down your accounts in the old state. 
right? It's to your bank accounts in the new state. Um, and then lastly, you also have to keep track of the number of days that you spend in a particular state. So most states or cities have the 184 day rule, which essentially states that if you spend 184 days or more there, then you are considered a resident, a resident of that state and or city. If you spend 184 days in New York City, you are deemed a resident for the year. So you have to do is count your days. So it's okay uh, to have multiple residences. It's fine. But once you get into that, um, that you're legitimately going back and forth for, you really got to track your days. Place that you want to make sure that you claim, you need to make sure that you're spending a majority of the days of the year there. That's why it's the 184 days, so that's just over half of the days of the year. Make sure that you're spending at least that amount of days uh, in the state that you want to claim as residency because if you get challenged and they'll count your days and you need to keep track of it, that will also play a big factor. So I hope this helps. So that's all for now. And uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, related to this or any other tax or accounting questions, feel free to reach out. Happy to help. Till then, see you on the next one.